Well, hello everyone and welcome to Hogarth's Global Astrology. Know your planets, know yourself or know your nation, know yourself. Interchangeable. <clears throat> okay. Today, uh, the important video here, uh, he says, but no, I, I genuinely think this, this is uh, really quite an important video. And this video today is, is broadly being termed, uh, I'm going to call it uh, uh, USA versus China. Yeah, inadvertent commas. Mm -hmm. And you guys will remember, <coughs> sorry, but <pardon, coughs> pardon me, I've been saying it for a little while now. And as you guys know, I said, look, we've got the eclipses coming up uh, in April. Yeah, starting 20th of April. And then a couple of weeks later, that will be the lunar, sorry, solar eclipse happening in sidereal Aries in Ashwini Nakshatra. Yeah, sign of speed, also the physician of the gods, etc. So there's all going to be stuff coming up with innovation and medicine and physicians being held to account. Yeah, it can bring up surprises. Jupiter will also be moving into sidereal Aries on the 22nd of April. And do you remember I said the accountability and all that stuff has to happen before something potentially kicks off that could make the whole Duck Larange trial thing, you know, Trump stuff look like a sideshow. Do you remember me saying that? I've said it a few times. And this is why uh, I need to mention USA and China, because as we've seen, the energy has changed. Please take a look back in my catalogue where I talk about the uh, accountability of Saturn. Do you remember me talking about that? I said there's going to be all sorts of accountability coming forward, which we see for a bit of Foxtrot. Yeah, Foxtrot news. We see that coming. But I said there'll be all stuff to do with tech, things to do with the sky, science, innovation, astronomy, etc. What have we seen? Chinese space balloon, etc. Governments doing new things, new rules and regulations and all of this kind of stuff, particularly in regards to tech, innovation, new things. Yeah. So we're going to look a little bit at those uh, energies. We're also going to look at the I've got the chart of China. This is what old school one, which I did ages ago. We are going to look at a little bit at Xi Jinping's chart. Remember, I said he's having activation. We're going to look a bit at Joe Biden's chart. Yeah, remember, he's having activation with the eclipses. And then behind here, I've got Doc LaRange, Donald Trump. Yeah. But before um, uh, I continue, so I just want to say to everyone, thanks, uh, everyone, so much for the support. If you're, pardon me, if you're new to the channel, then welcome. I always keep forgetting to say that. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I really appreciate you guys uh, being here. And if you enjoy the content that I put forward and you would like to support uh, my channel, then please consider um, liking and subscribing. And if you do that, hit the bell notification so you get to know. Um, so basically, because a lot of people are like, I've su subscribed, but I didn't hear your video. So you just click the notification be bell and that helps with that. And of course, if you'd like to know a bit more about Vedic Astrology, then of course, I've got membership as well. And I do deep dives. I've done so many. I've done, who have I done recently, uh, which is available to membership? I've done uh, Kanye West, <laughs> Dolly Parton, JFK, Martin Luther King, Michelle Obama, uh, Prince Andrew. So many. Tucker Carlson. Yeah, I've still not released that that one yet. Wait for the next shoe to drop, but it's all it's all coming true. So if that interests you as well, then maybe consider a membership where you can get access to those videos. And I do Vedic astrology as well. And then all the stuff that I've got coming up, my visions, my books and all of this stuff is for the Chalice of Light membership as well. So you will get all of that if you join Chalice of Light. But, you know, up to you, up to you guys. So there's that. So, yeah, like, subscribe, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. I, I always forget. It always goes out of my head. Anyway, let's get back to the meat and drink. Yeah, the meat and drink of what this is all about. Now, look, folks. The eclipses. Yeah, we're, we're about we're going to soon enter eclipse season. It's still about a month, a month or so away. But as I may have said before in previous videos, the the energies of the eclipse start about a month before so we're now today's the oh i forgot to say today is the 8th of march 
2023 and what time is it in my neck of the woods oh, i think it's 10 because oh, i'm recording this on my phone God, it's always the way whenever i just want to quickly get the time up my laptops go to sleep there 10 16 p.m at night yeah and ah oh, we got some things to cover yeah, we've got some things to cover here because what is the energies are changing. Now, eclipses are very, uh, very, very powerful. And the first eclipse of the of the year sets the tone for the whole year to come. Now, let's take a little flashback and let's go back to the 30th of April. Again, forgive me if you've heard me say this before, but many of you may, may not have heard it. 30th of April, 2022 solar eclipse happened here in sidereal Aries yeah in sidereal Aries in the nakshatra the star cluster called Barani Barani nakshatra nakshatra and that's where the solar eclipse was first one setting the tone for the whole year the sun deals with authority figures leaders CEOs of all kinds any any institution or persons of authority or person of authority so this happened on the 30th of April. Now, Barani Nakshatra, each Nakshatra has its own symbolism and its own deities. Now, Barani Nakshatra, the deity of uh, Barani Nakshatra is Yama, the god of death. Yeah, it deals with life and death, transformation, etc. Weighing of the soul's feather. It, it's got a lot to do with morals and punishment and stuff like that. But the symbol of Barani is the Yoni, which is the female reproductive system. A mere couple of days after that eclipse. Now, remember what eclipses are, how I describe eclipses. Something coming in, something coming out. It's like es escalators. Something comes down, something comes out. Something comes in, something leaves. People are born, sadly, often pets and persons can sadly pass. That can also be the case. But it always brings something out of the shadows, some kind of clarity or something that we weren't formally... Um, aware of but then becomes a part of sharp focus the symbol for barony is the yoni what happened on the 2nd of may 2022 it was leaked that road versus wade would be overturned yeah and then look at the rat's nest and hornet's nest that was yeah and you see how it themed it colored the whole theme at the whole year of 2022, up until the last set of eclipses, <clears throat> which was the lunar eclipse on the 8th of November 2022. And we all know what happened then. It was the midterm elections in the United States and you couldn't make it up for time, could you? And what was one of the things that was a big contributing factor? You guessed it. Roe versus Wade, abortion, female reproductive system, who has the rights, punishment, this, that and the other, wanting to what? Literally punish women where, sadly, people had to cross state lines, even girls, yeah, that had been abused. You know, all of this stuff, this harsh, harsh judgment, barony, punishment kind of coming down. So I just wanted to emphasize this is how the power of Vedic astrology works. These eclipses this year... These are the last that will be happening in Aries and the Libra axis. But actually, the one of the eclipses will actually be happening in late Virgo. Too long to explain, but I'll do an eclipse video for everyone nearer the time, all the signs, etc., as you would expect. So the nodes of the moon move backwards. Yeah. So if we're looking here, here's all the plan. This is the USA concert signing of the Declaration of Independence chart, 1776. 4th of July, 6.30 p.m. Philadelphia. Works beautifully, yeah, from the Vedic perspective. Anyways, the planets move clockwise in this South Indian style chart, but the nodes of the moon that set fate and destiny for everyone and everything on planet Earth go backwards. So the eclipses have been happening here. Sidereal Aries, sidereal Libra. But as time has gone on, they're slowly moving backwards. So actually they're going to the earlier part of Aries and the early and the uh, earlier part of Libra. And it's happening in the first nakshatra that begins the whole 27 nakshatra cycle. The first one is Ashwini. 
The last one is Revati. It's uh, Ashwini is in Aries. The last one is Revati in Pisces. Yeah, they're next to each other, but they're beginning and end. Ending and beginning. Yeah. Ashwini is all about new starts, fresh things. It's about speed, energy, moving forward. The, uh, the animals associated with Ashwini are horses. Yeah, so horses are what? Powerful. They deal with speed. The deities associated with this are the are the Ashwins or the Kumar, the Kumar twins. Yeah, they do. They're known as the physician of the gods. Yeah, they deal with eyesight as well in particular healings, uh, eyesight, even beauty, cosmetics. The uh, people can be involved in such professions, but I don't want to digress too much. The important thing is to understand it's speedy. It's one of the fastest nakshatras and it's dynamic. Ideally, the horses are running in an orderly uh, direction. So imagine, say, like you're looking at the chariot card or something like that. Sometimes the horses go haywire. Yeah. So there is order and there is discord and chaos also connected in with this nakshatra. Aries is also a sign of what? War. It's ruled by Mars. So do you see how I was saying things can hot up? We'll have to see when Jupiter comes in, planet of expansion. And you would have seen in a few Hogilies, but I also said as well, Will China be the peacemaker or will they escalate things or will that whole situation in Ukraine or somewhere else kick off? Yeah. Something new, Aries, fiery sign, combustion, energy, Jupiter, planet of expansion. Will something happen that could, you know, potentially make what we're looking at now look like a sideshow? Yeah. So I have to put that out there because when we look at what's going on now between the dynamics, the relationship now between USA and China, we see there's this tension, tension, tension creeping in, particularly with the spy balloons and all of the other stuff. And the other stuff that they shot down, which they say they can't analyze because it was blown into smithereens. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, whatever. The point is, is that we see this energy of Saturn moving into sidereal Aquarius, which is affecting what all things to do with the sky, technology, space, science, innovation of all kinds, but also accountability. Yeah. Is it accountability for China, for the spy balloon or maybe other things in regard to the you know what? Monsieur Covid. Yeah. Could we see some stuff there? Uh, could there be accountability the other way? You know, China might be saying certain, well, they are actually saying certain things in regards to the United States. So let's take a look. OK, so let's put this in context. Let's put this in context. Got my notes here to keep this uh, on track. I'm 12 minutes in already. Let's see if I can get the other bits done. This is a, a, a whistle stop, a whistle midweek whistle stop. OK. So at the National People's Congress... I'm assuming is it is in China. Forgive me if I'm wrong on that. Let me know in the comments. At the National People's Congress, the new Chinese foreign minister, Qin Gang, yeah, C -A Q I N G A N G. So I hope I've said that right. Should be should should be uh, Kin, yeah, Kin should be Kin, uh, or Qin, might be Qin Gang, might be Qin Gang. Uh, forgive me. Anyway. This is what he said. Yeah. Now he's new into the job. Yeah. So his 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 feet are, his seat is barely warm. But you know what it's like when you're new in the job. What you want to do? You want to impress the boss. Yeah. Think about it. Any new job that you start, any new job anyone starts, you want to make what a good impression. So in some ways, his words can sort of e echo, or be words that may be to please an audience potentially at home and a certain someone in particular, Xi Jinping perhaps. But this is what he said. Now, this is very interesting. He said, if the United States does not hit the brake, but continues, uh, continues to speed down the wrong path, no amount of guardrails can prevent derailing. There'll uh, surely be conflict and confrontation. Oh, now that is bombastic language. I'm sure we will all agree. Yeah. Now, look, he, he's, the, he's the new minister. I don't know how long he's been in his post. Let me know in the comments below if you have more details to furnish me on that. Because of, if you research things exhaustively, you know, 
I'm busy doing other stuff, as you know. <laughs> and I've got my uh, design uh, protected and painted, by the way, and soon I'm going to take it to the local jeweler to, anyway, you know, to see how much it would cost. But I'll show you at the end. The point is, is this. That language is very strident and it's very bold and it's quite aggressive. And it's quite unambiguous as well. You're saying, basically, you would say, stop what you're doing, hit the brakes. Otherwise, you're going to go off the guardrails and we're going to come into conflict with each other. Now, this could be saber rattling. Yeah, this could be a bit of like saber rattling. But it's actually relatively rare for China to be so explicit. Yeah, normally they are walking that fine line. What is it from the USA perspective? What is the USA? The USA administration is saying, ah, China might be considering giving uh, Russia, um, what's the word? Lethal assistance. Yeah, lethal assistance. Now, is this an aspersion? Is this a besmirchment of the Chinese character? Or is there something to it? Because we will all remember when a certain Putinesca was saying, I'm not going to invade Ukraine, USA were, cooked his goose and said, yes, he is. This is what he's going to do. And that ended up, remember, remember as well, Biden got a bit scolded at the time for being so frank. Ah, but he was vindicated. Could this be another potential vindication? We will have to see. It hangs in the balance. Now, remember what I was talking about. Remember, I said the transit of Mars. Mars will enter sidereal Gemini. When is it? Uh, on the 13th. Yeah, on the 13th of March. We don't even have that long. It's only the 8th. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So basically in five days time or loose change, Mars will enter sidereal Gemini and it will conjunct. In the USA Constitution chart, in the seventh house, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, where there are four planets, Mars, so transiting Mars will be with natal Mars. Venus, trades, goods, services, relationships of all kinds. Jupiter, philosophy, beliefs, ideas, law and lawmaking, uh, law and lawmaking, politics, righteousness, even can be fanaticism. And the sun, authority figures, leaders, yeah, of all kinds, transiting Mars, which is just on the old tippy tippy like here, because he's been going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards in sidereal Taurus, yeah, for almost eight months. Now he is at the tippy tippy cusp and he's going to be here, yeah, as I said before. And that is also coincidentally going to trigger Kamala Harris's chart as well, which you've also heard me talk about. Remember, I've been saying there's some kind of change coming up there. She wants to, she's chomping at the bit. She wants to do different stuff. Yeah, she wants to do different stuff. These eclipses that are coming, guess what? The moon, or shall I say moons? Yeah, so if we look here, the moon of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden both sit very close to each other in Aries, yeah? So it shows they see, you know, they do understand each other very well. But it's, it's over here, yeah? But remember, what's coming up, yeah? On the 20th, the eclipses are falling here. The next set, the last set of eclipses in Aries. And guess what? Boom! It falls right between Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's moons. Can you believe it? I mean, like, it's like her moon is it's only one degree off because it's going to be happening around about seven degrees of sidereal um, Aries. And Kamala Harris, Harris's moon is at like six degrees. And then Joe Biden's is not that much. His is at like, oh, God, I can't remember. Ugh. It's that eight, nine degrees or something. Forgive me if I've got that little bit wrong. But the point is, it is in Ashwini. Yeah, for both of them. So this is very interesting. So when we also consider that this Mars is also, remember I said, it's activating Xi Jinping's chart. Oh, look, here we are. Here's Joe Biden's moon at 7 degrees 55 minutes. There we are. You see that? 7 degrees 55 minutes. Now, this is when my, what was this last YouTube? 
this was the last time I looked at the eclipses and this was on the 19th of October 2022. Yeah, so you can see I did a little Biden special there. And I was showing the eclipses, but this time they're even closer. So there it is, you see. Oh, oh have I got it right? Come on, camera, zoom in, baby. Uh, maybe the shine is too much. But anyway, that's at 7 degrees 55 minutes. So it's the eclipse is hitting both of their moons at the same time. So there's that. Now let's look. Now look, here's the USA Constitution Declaration of Independence chart. With one, two, three, four planets in Gemini. Look at Xi Jinping's chart. This is this is the chart of Xi Jinping. When did I do a special on this? Oh, this was my Dragon Dream of China YouTube special, 30th of November 2022. Yeah, I printed off his chart. Anyway, look here. He has got one, two, three, four, five planets in sidereal Gemini. And Mars is about to go. <coughs> all over them activating his chart what does he have here he's got series here series is about uh, a mother's love uh, in in a way a love a devotion for someone or something but in the west it's a little bit more fluffy than what it actually is what i've truly found out it to be it represents three characters demeter so series is named after demeter the original greek goddess of harvest and fecundity motherhood etc devotion Demeter had a very famous daughter called who? Persephone, who was abducted and taken into the underworld. By who? Pluto. Hades. God of the underworld. Ceres, what I found, and this is what I'm going to be putting in my new book, by the way, is the stuff that's not in the books. Ceres actually represents those three characters. And I've, I've tested this and I've explored this. I kid you not. Just ask my clients. It just comes up as a theme. Ceres can also represent sometimes abduction. Persephone was abducted, but it can represent losing something and trying to get something back or having something and fearing losing it. Oh, isn't that pertinent? Yeah. For Mr. Xi. Yeah, because his domestic situation is a little bit sketchy at the moment. Yeah, the economy is a little bit... Um, uh, doddery why because after three years of lockdown you could almost say almost like an abduction yeah persephone was taken away and what confined the chinese people were confined for so long and you remember i had my dragon dream of china where i released the dragon and all that kind of stuff i can't take credit for what happened next but i think it was quite interesting that the lockdowns ended afterwards <laughs> go and look back at that video it's uncanny yeah it's uncanny so there's that so series can also deal with confinement or loss. Something precious is lost or something precious is confined and you're trying to get it back or something's trying to get free and away. Yeah. But then the sun is here. Look, sun, Mars, Mercury and Uranus. OK, what's the sun? CEOs, kingdoms, leaders. This this is his leadership, quite literally. But also as well in the USA chart, the sun is in Gen Gemini as well. Joe Biden. Yeah, he's the leader of the United States. Obviously, some people. The odd loony bin is still believing otherwise, you know, but obviously uh, Fox News are going to be brought to task on that one. So do you see the leaders of China and the USA are both affected by this transit of Mars? Kamala Harris is also triggered as well. That her, her ascendant is here and that Mars is going to fall exactly on top of hers. Oh my goodness. Things heating up a bit. But let's examine some of these planets in Xi's chart. So I've mentioned the sun. I've mentioned Mars. But look here. Mercury is what? Mercury is a planet of travel, communications of all kinds. So that's email, verbal communications, speeches, contracts, the whole shebang. He also deals with commerce and business. Mercury, Venus and Saturn are all business planets and they're all friends and they all do well in each other's signs. Except Venus technically debilitates in the sign of Virgo. She's delighted, but not as delighted as the debilitation of Mars in the sign of Cancer. But the point is they deal with planet Earth and the realities of negotiations and relationships. So there's, there's a lot here that maybe the, the communication which we've seen already has ramped up because let's flash back 
when we look at um, Chingang, where he said, if the United States does not uh, hit the brakes, but continues to speed down the wrong path, no amount of guardrails can prevent derailing. There'll surely be conflict and confrontation. Mercury is the planet of speech. He's also known as the envoy. He's also the accountant and stuff like that, but he's also known as the envoy who would go to foreign lands and bring messages and then bring messages back. Isn't it interesting how the new foreign minister is having this hot speech? Because even though Mars isn't exactly there yet, it happens a week or so before. Yeah, it's like Mars gets closer. You've got, remember, these planets have gra gravity. They say gravity is a weak force, but works over extraordinary distances. So the gravitas of Mars is starting to heat up that Gemini already. So do you see, in, in a way, that the evidence for that is already showing? Because when you want to know what's going on in a nation, you can look at the at the leader's chart. This is something Joni Petri does, actually. I'll, I'll you know, give her credit uh, when it, whenever one is referencing other people's insights, which doesn't always happen for me, unfortunately, but, you know, whatever. But if you are using some of this information, please feel free to uh, quote me and so you, people know where you got it from. But anyway, I digress. But she's absolutely right, you know, um, uh, on that. You can tell an awful lot of what is going on in the nation by looking at the leader's chart. And that Mercury situation totally proves the point. But the more important thing here is the Uranus, yeah? Xi has got Uranus here. Now, Uranus is sudden shocks and surprises. Unexpected events can deal with rebellion, uh, can also deal with people wanting to break free. Yeah, could this be a domestic incident? Or will there be something dynamic or unexpected that maybe leads in regards to rhetoric? Mer Mercury, because this is Mars as well, being uh, who's going to return to Mars. Mars is a planet of war. The sun is the kingdom. Ceres, as I said before, gaining something or trying to control something and losing it or having something and being worried that it's going to go. So there's going to be tremendous triggering that is going to go on. If uh, we know the uh, economy in China is not working so well because the people are locked, what, are locked away for so long. Persephone, confinement. So they need the West. But at the same time, Xi has to look strong. He doesn't want to look like he's being submissive. Yeah. So we see this tension building. Likewise, as well, you know, uh, the USA and the rest of the world, you know, is not wanting China to give potentially, allegedly um, lethal assistance to tip the scales in the favour of Putin. Because, of course, if Putin wins in Europe, then that that's not great, is it? So do you see, this is almost like a proxy war. Ukraine, in a way, has become this proxy war between these, these titanic uh, countries and forces. So if we look here, this is China's chart. Now, I did the transit for this, this particular chart, on the 10th of June, 2021. Oh, my goodness, yeah? Now, if we look here, this has a lot to do with Monsieur Covid. Yeah. And I'll just write what my notes were at this at this time. So I, it may have been earlier, but let's just assume the notes were around the 10th of 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 June 2021. Could have been earlier. I can't remember. I didn't actually put the date. I'd actually scribble this up. Anyway, I put here Mercury exalted in Chinese chart showing the exceptional intelligence of the Chinese. Yeah, they are uh, with the sun showing the amazing ability of the state to collect information. However, Mercury is retrograde and conjunct Neptune, the planet of disease. Remember, Neptune also as well deals with deception, illusions, delusions, yeah? The unreal appearing real. That's part of the shadow of Neptune. The positives, of course, are spirituality, music, and transcendence, and utter gorgeousness, yeah? So also, in my little dialogues with Neptune, he's be like, you need to speak more about my virtues, yeah? <laughs> but he can deal with what? Gaslighting, yeah? The unreal appearing real, but gaslighting, yeah? We all know what, 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 what that is now, pretty much. Anyway, 
So Neptune, the planet of disease, and K2, the nodes of the moon, right? The nodes of the moon deal with pandemics, by the way. Yeah, that's why every 18 and a half years, if you look back historically, there's always some big shindig or when they're, when they're inverted or etc. But particularly when they're in Gemini and sidereal Gemini and Sagittarius. Anyway, the node of pandemics. They sit in the ninth house of laws and internationalism and aspects the third house of travel, commerce and business. It's affected the whole world via Monsieur Covid. Yeah. Saturn, Lord of the first and second house, is in the eighth house of death and transformation. So what am I talking about there? I don't want to go too much off topic. But in the chart of china so this is the republic of china 1st of october 1949 at 3 15 pm yeah because we we know when they declared there is that element there of disease which somehow spreads to the rest of the world now look when i mention this this is not the people of china that i'm talking about we're talking about the regime, yeah? Let's just put it that way. Don't get this confused because there's too much Asian hate and all of that stuff going on. And I'm not one of them people. But I'm just showing you the energy of the chart. Even though this is hand is illustrated, this is what's in the na uh, natal chart of China. Yeah? There's the ninth house. And look, it's in the sign of Virgo, which deals with what? Health and healing and overcoming obstacles. It's got a lot to do with disease. Ninth house is travel, internationalism, politics, etc. As I've said, the rest is history. Yeah. So I wanted to show you those dynamics there. Now, for China, believe it or not, they've just come out of Sadi Sati. Well, yeah, actually, they have come out of Sadi Sati. What is Sadi Sati? It's when traveling Saturn is with the moon. Yeah, of a nation or a person. So you can see Saturn has been in sidereal Capricorn uh, for since when? Uh, end of January, or you can say February 2020. And he was there for two and a half years, two and a half slash three years. When Saturn was, is with the moon, it means extreme pressure. It's very, very difficult. A person often has to struggle, get their house in order, sort out a lot of things. Wouldn't it make sense? Doesn't it make sense? The Sadi Sati, Saturn, crossing over, being with China's moon over these last three years. What have they been dealing with? Restrictions, lockdowns. Yeah, what's Saturn? Rules, regulations, government, restrictions, difficulties, hard karmas to deal with. Ah, where's my Saturn glyph? I thought I had my Saturn glyph and then I could show you, but... Anyway, the point is Saturn was here, now he's here in sidereal Aquarius. And guess what? That means America has just going into Sadi Sati. Look, China's moon in sidereal Capricorn, the USA's moon is in sidereal Aquarius. Yeah, both belong to Saturn. America is just going into Sadi Sati. Potentially a time of what? Trials, tribulations, difficulties, having to get one's house in order. Look at all the cray cray that's been going on. How much longer can this really continue? All of this BS that we're seeing, particularly with someone like DeSantis and stuff like that. So here we're seeing this is also coinciding with the USA's what? Pluto return, which is happening here. Yeah, transiting Pluto is in sidereal Capricorn. Of course, in Western astrology, which still works, but remember, they're in a different part of sky and it doesn't deal with the body of the planet. So they're saying that uh, Pluto is about to leave and go into Aquarius. Yeah. So a lot of Western astrologers are feeling quite optimistic about that. Yeah, because altruism, etc. However, sorry to be the one <laughs> to be the bringer of well, I'm not going to call it bad news. But the body, yeah, the physical body of Pluto is actually here. Yeah, he's come back to himself. You've heard us all talk about Pluto return, etc., etc. Yeah, so this is long transit. But the peak of it is going to be 2023, 2024, going into 2025. Once Pluto, once transiting Pluto 
gets kind of two to three degrees beyond its natal position of six degrees and 48 minutes, then you will see that, you know, things will hopefully improve. Yeah. But that battle of darkness, as it were, is happening now. Doesn't it make sense? Look what's happened. According to Vedic astrology, Pluto went into sidereal Capricorn, government, organizations of all kinds. Pluto is what? Hades, god of the underworld, the worst of what humanity can do. Also, it can be the best, which can be, you know, transformation, mea culpa, alchemical work, shadow work. Yeah, that's the positive side. But the difficult side is what? Abduction, fascism, corruption of all kinds, dark agendas, the whole shebang. Pluto moved into sidereal, Aquarius, uh, sidereal Capricorn, according to Vedic astrology, on the 1st of January 2021. What happened five days later? January 6th. Someone wrote in my previous comments when I said, well, fascism didn't begin and blah, blah, blah. Then, no, of course not. We know that. But I've said before, we are entering this time, which is like the 1930s. Haven't you noticed? Suddenly, everyone is becoming a bloody fascist, pretty much. And, and that's not even too strong a word. Look at DeSantis in Florida. Look what's going on with Netanyahu, yeah, trying to take over the whole judiciary and all that stuff. I'm going to do a deep dive on him, by the way. I'll have to see. I'll, I'll do it for membership and maybe I might release it later, but I'll do a deep dive on him. Him, yeah, Netanyahu, Netanyahu and Trump, Duck Larange could sell lives to cats. Yeah, that's how... I, it's just beyond. Yeah, it's almost as supernatural. The fact that that guy is not behind bars. But anyway, I don't want to digress too much. But when we step a tape, take a step back... And when we just look at what is going on in the news, what is happening? Yeah. Pluto, for everyone in the world, is in sidereal Capricorn, according to Vedic astrology. Capricorn is top down structures, governments. It's also companies, distribution systems of all kinds. Look what's been literally going off the rails. Pluto is like a hand grenade. Ohio, yeah, chemical spills, things going into the earth, yeah, Pluto is also deals with earth, Gaia as well, because Demeter, Persephone, and uh, Hades, Pluto, for me, Ceres is, combines the energy of all three, so what we have, derailments, chemical spills in Ohio, company corruption, all of this, I know, you're probably thinking, oh my god, Hoagie, when are you going to tell us some good news? The good news is this, yeah, but we have to embrace it. We need our courage. We need to be brave. We need to do alchemy. We've all got to do our shadow work to transform these energies into something positive. But as I've said before, the planets are like radio stations and they broadcast their lowest vibrations to highest vibrations simultaneously. Most people go with the lower vibration, particularly those that are obsessed with power and control. Look at George Sanchez lying out of his you-know-what, yeah? Because he just did it for the power. Look at a certain Murdoch, yeah? He said, it's not about green. It's not about blue. It, no, he said, no, sorry, forgive me. He said, it's not about red. It's not about blue. It's about green. Ah, is that not Pluto personified? Look at my... um. If you've got time, look at my uh, Fox News video. Everything I said there that what they're about has borne out. It's come true. It's all about this. All about this. So that's the shadow of Pluto. Yeah, Pluto also deals with billionaires as well. In fact, all the outer planets. Uh, Uranus deals with billionaires. That's your tech billionaires. Neptune deals with uh, billionaires as well. Those would be your arts industry, Hollywood billionaires. And Pluto deals with that power, power, people that dig stuff uh, out of the ground, ores, minerals, but also those that manipulate. Yeah. So do you see this Pluto return for the United States is also coinciding with Sadi Sati as well. Oh, my God. This is why it's so intense. So cray cray. It will be intense. The peak of the Pluto return is the end of 2023 
going into 2024. What's happening then? The general election of the United States. Do you see how it's all culminating together? So we all need to do our shadow work. We all need to do our alchemy. We all need to embrace the truth and transform in order to go up to the next level. Like I said, we're in this composting stage where all the maggots are writhing and we're seeing all this stuff come out. Look, they tried a coup attempt in Germany. That was shut down. Yeah, that only took that took less than a week, by the way. Mm, yeah, <laughs> maybe some tips could be taken there. Literally, do you remember there was that uh, guy who's like, I am Prince blah, 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 and I'm going to take over Germany. And Germany was like, uh, I don't think so. Arrest, arrest, busted that. I'm sure if they're not in jail already, they're certainly on trial and stuff like that. They did not hang about. Same thing as well with, what was it? Was it Venezuela? Oh, mm. One of the nations in South America, the guy tried to do a coup. I think he's still trying to dangle on. And they were like, no, not having that yet. Take it out from power. And he's still fighting and wriggling. I'm, I'm not sure where that story has developed. Let me know in the comments if you know a bit more about that. But do you see? We see the themes. All we have to do is just look at the news and what's going on. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Neptune has now changed signs. He has now moved into sidereal Pisces. Remember, he moved off away out of Aquarius on the 22nd of February 2023. This year, he's only just moved out. So it also means as well a spell that was cast Remember, Neptune can also do with spells, glamour and illusions that was cast over the third house of the United States charts. The third house deals with media. Yeah. Communications, travel of all kinds. Uh, and the moon yeah, deals with what? The people. Yes. Yeah? So and now there's reality is starting to come out in regards to what? Media and the spells that may have been cast. The most obvious thing is what? Foxtrot news yeah because now saturn has come in here putting pressure on that moon putting pressure on those who have been lying and all this stuff but what it means is those that are trying to evade justice will get kind of caught up but there's going to be other shenanigans anyway so there's that with duck larange let's see where the eclipses are falling for him oh well you know what he might be you He's, he's might be slightly less impacted, but we'll see here. Anyway, look, in his chart, this is where the eclipses are falling. So they're falling into the ninth house for him, which deals with litigation law. Yeah. Lawmakers. And third house, media, communication, messages and stuff like that. So, look, I don't want to keep going over old ground because I've already covered that. And I said he's going to be there's going to be more accountability for things he's saying and all that kind of stuff and what have you. However, though. The ninth house can be quite a lucky house. And, uh, you know, we'll we just have to see how that happens. But like I said, the wheels, the more difficulty for Duck LaRange really potentially is here. Like I said, the 22nd of October, 2023, when he goes into Jupiter K2, K2 is snip snip. And I said this could be where his properties are affected and stuff like that. And that new that uh, New York thing is set up for October, isn't it? October of this year. So if there is going to be change, it's going to be K2 that can do it. But K2 is the only one powerful enough to blast off those wheels. That guy, like I said, Duck LaRange, his gift is grift. He is a, a, a blackmailer par excellence. And I don't mean that in a complimentary way. It's just true. Yeah. He can sell lives to cats. This is the guy that can brainwash in broad daylight. So we'll have to see what that K2 will do. But let's hope at least it's a house arrest or something like that. But if I were him, I would just get out of town, dude, <laughs> before that happens. Because you might be, you know, you might be screwed. So there is that. So let's pull. Oh, look at that. How quick the time goes so quick. But one has to cover the details. Right. I'm going to pull some tarot now for uh, China and the USA. How about that? Look at that, Hoagie. You should have had your cards ready. Oh, here they are. Mm. Right. Rider Waite, 
let's have a look see and see what's going on you know what actually that was quite a lot of detail wasn't it so actually i think i did quite well for that for that amount of time because reference this video guys and let's see what happens but you heard it here yeah i've gone into explicit detail about the transits the sadi sati what's going on xi jinping's chart china's chart etc they're just coming out of sadi sati yeah their saturn is now in a sidereal aquarius in the second house yeah which deals with money values and all of that kind of stuff what they're going to be trying to do boost up their economy Look what's at the base of the deck before I shuffle the world card. Endings and beginnings, beginnings and endings. Also talking about that transition from Revati Nakshatra, the last Nakshatra going into Aries, the first Nakshatra. Revati being in Pisces, Ash uh, Ashwini being in Aries, yeah? So, right, let's pull uh, China. What's going on with China in regards to Ukraine? Are there such things as um, potential lethal assistance or is that an aspersion, yeah, which is being said by the United States? Let's see what the cards have to say. China. What's going on with China? It's probably going to be an hour video in the end, but, you yeah, know, I do cover a bit of ground, so hopefully you're still still here with me let's have a look all right let's see what's going on with china oh ah ah bloody hell all right look at this seven of swords oh god trying to get away with something how many times does this card come up yeah particularly when we're talking about russia yeah so yeah, yeah, so you know, China could be up to something here. What I'm what I think this means is that when but we need to look at the next card, yeah. Always look at the cards in context. Yeah, so this could be potentially trying to get away with something, but look, two of wands, this is the prospecting card. You notice the person here has what? The world in his hands. You remember when I flipped over the deck before I shuffled? The world was there. This is a card of entrepreneurship, business, making plans. Yes, they may have been earlier on, they might have been trying to get away with something or hiding something, particularly in regards to potentially Monsieur COVID. Yeah. You know, lab leak, is it not this, that and the other? Look, I've got my opinion. If certain bodies are starting to support that theory, well, you got to remember, I look, I look at the astrology. Remember, I've been contemplating this concept, yeah, of a leak or escapage and stuff like that, basically at least since the 10th of June 2021, yeah? It takes patience, you know, to be an astrologer. Sometimes you just got to be not. Anyway, I digress. So maybe, look, trying to get away with something potentially, but this could also be as well, this also means wit and cunning, yeah? Using one's wit and cunning in regards to what? Trade outside world, yeah? China's economy has been a bit sketchy, so they're like, oh, yeah, can't get away, you know, too much. Look at this. Four of Wands. What can this also represent? For me, this can represent literally like the White House, USA, whatever. But I found it tends to deal with governments in general, the, whatever the equivalent of the White House is. It also means what? Landmarks, celebrations, etc. But fours are about stability. This house I also associate with real estate. Yeah. Now we're talking about, pardon me, we're talking about China here. And there are some issues of what? The real estate market, they've built too much. It's like they were over enthusiastic whole towns empty yeah i was watching something where they said uh, potentially up to 60 million homes the population of germany is empty in china yeah so this is my real estate card this is a card of enthusiasm reaching landmarks and stuff like that but hey, look maybe they were over enthusiastic maybe they might need to sell a bit of that off yeah to try and get away with that economic situation they've got brewing at home However, I like reading the cards backwards. No one else does it. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, but I like to read them backwards as well. So if we look here, Wheel of Fortune. Oh, yes, a time of fate and destiny that China are coming into. Things may be beyond their control. Situations at home could potentially kind of change very dynamically. 
international situation could change dynamically as well. We've heard the wording already from, uh, what's his name? From, oh, I've already forgotten, King Chin, where is he? Mm -hmm. Chin Gang, yeah, so we've already heard. But look, outcome card, strength. They're going to have to use their composure, strength. This is a time where China is going to have to rely on its inner resources because it's going to be having a lot of pressure. There's the pressure coming from the United States, but there's also the domestic pressure as well. Remember as well, the real estate situation is not so hot. So Mr. Xi uh, is, is on a bit of a tightrope, but there's this element of wheel of fortune. Let's hope things don't escalate too much. And we don't have something, the temperature rising, but Jupiter could, planet of expansion could heat the whole thing up. We could also see things as well with heat records being broken again. Jupiter's going to be in Aries for about a year. Forest fires, the usual. Um, too much water in the air because he's known as a wet and fiery planet. So that can mean humidity, heat fire but also steam yeah so stuff like that so we could be dealing with forest fires or too much heat again and all that kind of stuff but things could heat up on the international stage which they seem to be already okay let's pull now the usa and then we'll call it a day there all right okay USA. now what's the going on for the usa in context in its relationship with china are they onto something? Are they are they correct about lethal assistance, or do they need to maneuver and rally the allies to, of course, help Ukraine? Let's see. Let's see what the cards are. All right, how are we doing for time? I'm Fifty-one minutes and loose change. All right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> fascinating. Okay, fascinating. So when we look at this, we get the card of pondering. Yeah, this is the card of pondering, or as I refer to it as the card of pondering. When we look here, you can see the man here is, it's not only pentacles, which deals with money. It also deals with harvest, yield. What's happening? The USA is putting, what, a lot of money into Ukraine. Ukraine is also known as, what, the breadbasket of Europe. So this is about investments or ROI, return on your investments. Is it going to be a yield or is it a spot harvest? We'll have to see. But at the moment, we can see America is very much investing. If we imagine this is Ukraine, this is America uh, and, and Biden and everyone, you know, putting their resources in there. Now, what we got here is the page of wands. Now, the pages are all about messages and wands are all about passion. Yeah, this is about speaking passionately. This can be the orator. However, look, it has come in technically the obstacle position in a five card spread. So could this be America might have to be very careful with its words, with its messaging. Yeah. And make sure that its language is not too fiery. So maybe this could be uh, America trying to cool the temperature down a bit, because remember as well what 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 Mr. What Mr. Kin said, yeah, what Mr. Kin said. Uh, it's always difficult, King Gang. Uh, he said, if you don't put on the brakes, etc., etc., you know, a bit of saber rattling, but that's quite hot language. So the USA has to be careful with its rhetoric, with its oration, not to heat things up too much. I'm sure Biden will find another way. Now, look, you saw me shuffling the deck, didn't you? But look who's back. So again, we're talking about what? The administration. I said I often use this card to represent the governments, the White House or a nation's equivalent to that. Here it is. So here the right White House is going to maybe have to moderate its language in order not to spoil its investments or harvests. You see, I like to read it backwards as well. Yeah. However, look. We've got here, what's this? This is the old seven of wands, defending, battling, fighting, defending a position. Do you see all these ones? A lot of heat and a lot of passion. Could it be that maybe the USA might just throw in a few word bombs here and there? We would have to see. Or will they have to defend a position? I think this is them also as well trying to defend their position in terms of the defense of the Ukraine and trying to rally troops and stuff like that. Outcome card. Hierophant, which deals with what? Can deal with religious organizations of all kinds, but very often it re represents what? 
government. So we see here the cards are spot on. White House government, yeah? So when we look at all of that, when we actually look at all of that, and when I read it back over, yeah? The government institutions are trying to defend their current resistant uh, position, yeah? In reg uh, and stance of the White House and the official policy of right now. Yeah, this could also be Congress as well. I think um, Zelensky is trying to get McCarthy to go over, yeah? But they're going to have to be careful with their messaging so that they don't spoil their harvest, that they don't undo all of that powerful work that has been done in the Ukraine. So, in Ukraine, sorry, I'm not supposed to say the I will leave it there because um, I took you guys on quite a gallop on that. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. But remember as well, in terms of to try and turn this energy around, it's about the shadow work. It's about transformation. It's about uh, alchemy. It's about mea culpa. People have to own. We have to own our shadow. How we might be contributing in ways to the negativity and the darkness. It doesn't mean denying it. Yeah, there's too much of this spiritual bypassing as you know and i'm not not a fan of it because it, it doesn't it, this is about deep nitty-gritty stuff and remember what i said it's not just that the usa is having a pluto return which only you know pluto takes about 244 years to go around the whole of the zodiac which is significant in of itself it's also sadi sati as well which is sometimes known as seven years of trials but it depends, of course, if there's planets before or after. So, but at the moment, this is peak Sadi Sati for USA coming and China's just coming out of their Sadi Sati. Yeah, so their lockdowns and stuff are ending and stuff. So, but there's this relationship here, this dynamic happening between these two powerful nations and rivals. Let's hope that the rhetoric calms down and I hope when the eclipses happen, nothing too cray-cray happens. However, that window of, uh, of accountability, like I said, things are brewing. Events could overtake things. Ashwini in Aries is all about speed. The horses, things moving forward at a rapid pace. We could just have things, events just kind of take over. And then it's just like, ah. Uh, do you remember I said we might just be like, ah, oh, let's just move on, yeah, in regards to certain things. Let's hope we're not moving on from justice, but let's also hope we're not rushing into things. This is a time for cool heads. This is a time for reflection, alchemy, not to, not to make rash decisions because the stakes are a little bit too high. So what my hope is, is that when Jupiter enters uh, sidereal Aries that it can potentially bring philosophy and peace and not just heat the whole thing up. But we will have to see, get ready, though, when the eclipses happen. Things will come out of the dark, particularly in regards to health and healing and physicians and medical professionals and man-made things and all of that stuff. Remember, I've warned this already. So interesting times, yeah, particularly March going into April. But hopefully things might calm down after April. We will have to see. But I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining. And of course, if you'd like a consultation with me or anything like that, please visit my website, which is thearchetypalblueprint.com. But if you actually write Hogarth Global Astrology, that will get you there. I had to change things up a bit. Uh, and yeah, you can see there. I used to have tons of consultations before. I really kind of pared it back. But the classics are still there. I will leave it there. Thanks so much for uh, all the support. And of course, if you've enjoyed this content or if you found it illuminating, don't forget to like and subscribe. It'd be much appreciated. And click the bell notification as well so you get notified. You will see me next on Hogley. Lena's already got a question coming in, so but I'll leave that for the show then. And I will see you all soon. All right. Bye for now. Cheers.